Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. What we're going to talk about today is something that you you hear a lot of uh, nowadays and more so over the last several years. Um, it's a product that's been very promoted. We're going to talk about switchgrass today, guys, but we're not going to talk about so much in depth about what switchgrass really is. We're going to really strategize on where to plant switchgrass. So first and foremost, the, the where to is very important. The how to is just as important, right? I highly recommend, if you haven't already, to reach out to uh, John Comp in the UP of uh, Michigan. Get a hold of John and really uh, pick his brains, go over the process that they've been doing for years. I've learned a lot from him, um, and now they're offering that RC Big Rock. Uh, it used to be cave -in rock, obviously, that everybody used. I've got cave -in rock here on the farm um, here in central Kentucky. All in all, there's a lot of great, great switchgrass products out there, but I really believe there's a product for everybody, right? There's a product for uh, your region, uh, your need. So if you haven't already, reach out to John. I know John would be uh, more than happy to walk you through prep and planning situations. In Michigan, uh, I was used to frost seeding a lot of switchgrass and I had very good luck on my own property and my client uh, properties. But there's so many more ways. Weed control is a huge deal with switchgrass. Um, and and uh, you know ground what ground what uh, is it is it a little wetter than it is does it ever dry out all them things that you can go over with John and I highly 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 recommend getting in touch with him and if he doesn't have the answer he's got a gentleman that he works with that will have the answers we're gonna touch on a couple things here that I really think get folks in trouble I released a video last year uh, talking about is switchgrass the cure all. And that video did real well, and I got a lot of questions, I got a lot of calls and emails on that. And the reason is I think that that really resonates with a lot of folks. Contrary to any belief out there or what you've been taught, switchgrass does not cure everything, right? Switchgrass is a great tool, like I said, but it has to be in the right spots. So, a couple things we're gonna talk about right here. We're gonna go over to this side of the board, and we're gonna touch on the where switchgrass is best right the most common places there's a lot of places you can use it but where switchgrass is best uh, and what it's used for number one guys that probably is on the top of my list is access a lot of properties over the years uh, any flat ground that has that was nearest the gate right so you pull in and go right to farming was the areas that they cleared well that kind of goes against deer, our deer hunting strategies, right? So now we are left with that because it's been farmed this, that way for so long. So when you go to get into stand, this, this uh, go to get into the property, right? It's, the, you're walking right through a field. So here to go to the board, guys, this P down here would be, uh, you know, the parking spot, just using a square 40 or, you know, square 160 or whatever the case is. And we've kind of got a couple things here listed on the board, but park down here in the corner and you're walking up and this is a lot of open ground anywhere where that access to stand locations and down your your uh, perimeter or your fence line is a great spot to put it obviously more so on your side that you're trying to screen but e even that because yes we'd like to you know if we're walking north we're going to blow that wind uh, out of the core not into the core as we're walking up in here so probably hunting this on the westerly winds right um, not a bad idea to put the trail, your access trail, in the center of it, not all your switchgrass off to one side or the other. And the reason I say that, guys, is because switchgrass is very loud. Um, a lot of times it's not so much, I mean, we have to dump that wind into a place that we can't control. Obviously, if there's a bunch of bedding right here and the neighbors have created bedding and you got to watch that getting in and out of properties, right? But in order to utilize the core of your property or utilize the value of the acreage of the potential core, you have to get on and off the property. So it's switchgrass is very loud and it's also a, a very, very uh, powerful wind break, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, but it will deter scent. I mean, scent and noise, right? Now, it's not gonna take your scent away. It doesn't, 
It doesn't dilute your scent uh, to a point where they can't smell you, but boy, when it's broken up into so much and it kind of, what it does guys is it's, it acts as kind of like that, uh, you know, sitting in a, a cedar tree and you got cedars behind you. When the wind's coming in, you don't have that clean air, right? That you're sitting in the stand and all of a sudden that's, that wind is going back in front of you and folks, you know, call all the time and say, why is the wind going down there? I've got the thermals and the wind in my favor. And I always tell you, you know, look behind you. Is there any conifer? Is there any blockage behind you? And a lot of times that is, it's a restriction. It's the same thing with switchgrass. So what happens is if you, you put that trail in the center, you kind of can tunnel a lot of that scent. So think about that. If you don't need it to the, to the, to the uh, you know, both sides, definitely have it to the side that you're trying to screen or, or trying to be safe on, right? So distance wise is a big thing. And I think John at uh, North Coast Whitetails will tell you this. I think a lot of folks don't plant switchgrass in enough uh, volume as far as width, right? When you're talking about screening. I have found that about 20 foot is, is about the minimum. Um, so two 10 foot planters or, you know, three, three or four of them, eight foot planters, whatever you've got to get that seed in the ground. If you're drilling it, make sure that you've got that 20, 24 foot. If you're going to put your trail in the center of it, and you're going to perforate that with a mowed walk trail, then maybe you need, you know, 20 foot on each side of you kind of thing. And the reason for that is, is it's very loud. Once it matures, it supports each other, right? So if you do it narrow, it does have a tendency. I mean, we're, we're, we've got to give it everything, right? It's just, it's no different than planting uh, John's HD screening real narrow and expecting it because it's so tall, expecting it to, you know, battle the elements. It will, it's a great product. The problem with it is, or the, the plus of it is, is if you can do it wide enough, it supports each other. Same thing with switch. So your access is a, is a big, big piece of it, right guys? Um, if you need it. Now, if your access is in the timber, don't waste the money on it. I've seen, John has recently posted some videos with that uh, RC Big Rock growing in some, you know, very, very shady, sandy like stuff. Um, but the theory is plant it somewhere where it can get sun. If this is timber, guys, don't waste the money to plant switchgrass on there. Now, if you've cleared this out, if you've cleared an access out and you got some sunlight to it and it's timber on both sides of you, then you can do that. It's all about getting the sunlight to it. Um, it is a grass, right? So it's, it, it does need sunlight and moisture to live and grow. Um, number two, guys, is the non-deer areas. I think, I think most folks uh, maybe, maybe, maybe this goes into what we're going to talk about right here is when we're starting to talk about more of the uh, rich country, but a lot of, a lot of folks, um, don't understand the power of actually making switchgrass, uh, dominant in an area and making it pure so it doesn't have food in it, which isn't bedding value. Will they bed in it? Yes, they will if they're pressured into it and they don't have any other options. So it's not that they're not going to be in it. I get folks saying this all the time. I'm a, I'm a big, um, you know, promoter of putting switchgrass pierced as you can possibly get it, taking great care of it, less food in it, less deer. And I get guys all the time, well, that's bedding. You're planning that for bedding. Well, unless it's got food in it, it's not bedding unless it's high pressured bedding or it's the only thermal cover, right? So that, that's one thing that you, you have to really you know, keep in mind is if it's the only thermal cover that you, you've got on the property and it's harsh, harsh conditions, they may be in it you know, because they're probably missing feeding, uh, you know, feeding times throughout the day. So something to keep in mind, non-deer areas. Fill an area that you're blowing scent into. It'd be no different than uh, putting your back against a big ravine, blowing the wind out into it, blowing the wind over a, a pond, something like that, right? And and densifying it, right? You you make that area dense so they can't see across the field, but there's nothing in it. Um, if you have to blow your scent into that spot, like I said, notorious ridge country, um, you know, piece of the puzzle. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Make it appear, keep the deer out of it. You add food to it, you're going to make bedding. So. Um, 
the core density. So let, let's talk about this one, guys. The, the third thing that comes out to me is a, is a great place to put it, and then we're gonna touch on a couple things here. Um, tim, timber, uh, let's use this as a 40. I'm gonna zoom in here uh, on this one for you guys, but let's use this one first and foremost. A lot of, some of the properties they get to because road access is out here and like we talked, you know, over the years, everybody's cleared it out by the road and the timber's on the back. What do you do with this property out here that a lot of times gets walked through and we all wanna just hunt the timber? There's a lot, a lot of properties out there that you could really expand the core volume by planting it to switchgrass. So a volume of switchgrass is a great thing, but there has to be more than just a volume, what I call that ocean, that big ocean of, of switchgrass, right? It ties into what we talked about before. I think po folks look at this as I'm gonna plant switchgrass and I'm gonna cure the world and I'm gonna have all the deer in there because it's just thick bedding. Well, it, th there's so much more that you could be doing than just planting a, a huge bank of switchgrass um, and, and getting the benefits. The perfect example is this. If you've ever noticed, there's a reason that CRP programs have switchgrass in them, but they're not solid switch, right? Solid switch stands up better than a mixture of switch, right? Solid, solid switch, solid anything, solid screening, John's HD screening, straight Egyptian wheat, anything that's pure stands up better than something that's porous. But in a CRP program, or CRP planning, a lot of that is focused towards birds, butterflies, and habitat. So there's food in it, right? So there's goldenrod and everything else. So the next time you're going by someone that's got a pure switchgrass planting, and then you go by someone that's got, you drive by and you're watching this field every day you go to work, and it's a CRP field, and you're always seeing bucks and, and deer running through it, is because it has food and it has more than just pure switch. So something to think about guys, switch is great, especially uh, the new stuff that they're, you know, John is promoting and selling. Great, great stuff. Growing in some horrible conditions, I think is gonna really work for a lot of folks. Michigan notorious for that because of the, it's a lot of that sandy loam ground, right? Uh, Northeast, you know, guys in Maine, uh, Vermont, having great luck with it. Remember though, if you plant it, you create this density, but what does the density have? What more does it have to offer, right? So we're gonna touch this, we're gonna work our way across the board here, guys. Touch on this one here. In Ridge Country, it goes to this topic here, this non-deer area. In Ridge Country, I find a lot of times is, you know, this would be kind of a slope, let's say, and we're hunting this on an AM westerly wind thermals, and there's this ridge top here um, where a lot of folks get themselves in trouble. Like you said, every inch of the property has to be planted in something, a food plot, right? But if you can divide a property and have interior access on ridge country, I've got perfect example here. Because there's so much contour and so much flow throughout the property that you don't have on a common flat ground, right? You have to be able to, or you should be able to, possibly could be able to access it. The way to get in and out of that is to take one side of it, plant it to switch, do what we said here. Maybe put yourself in the center of it if you need a buffer going through. If this is all big open timber, then put this trail in the center of it, leave you about 10, 20 foot on this side, so then you can just drop down into a stand location, right? Our channel is brought to you in part by these great partners, Painted Arrow Outdoors, Race Proven Performance, and C6 Land Clearing, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Drone Deer Recovery, Cutty back. Bass Pro and Cabela's. Ace Hardware, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Northwoods Whitetails, your food plot headquarters. Plot Doctor and Harper Growing Solutions. Real Wood Productions, the log trough feeder. Scent Thief, Hunt Stand, and First Form Outdoors. Switchgrass, 
on them interior ridges will shock you on, on what you can densify that core and you can get in and out of the in, in and out of the property and access those spots where most folks would be uh, planting it. We're gonna non-deer area it, right? And we're gonna blow that in. So all this orange here, obviously guys should have touched on that before, but it's switch, right? Um, represents switch. So really, really think about that when the next time that you're, you, you're in ridge country and you're accessing down an open ridge top, when I say open ridge top, I don't mean open hardwood ridge top, but I mean open um, something that's been across the road. I've got a property across the road here. My neighbors is is perfect example of this. Uh, you know, they pushed all the um, cedars off some of those ridges years ago and we're going to hay it uh, and the ground is so horrible that you can't get anything to grow on it. Um, so switchgrass would strive, right? And it helps you get in and out of those stands locations, non-deer area. This one here, guys, is, is probably the biggest piece of this whole video is to learn right here that I think. As solid bedding, right? Switchgrass used as solid pieces, like we talk of ocean, is not going to get you where you want to be. There has to be more involved in that. So remember, if you're looking to access past it, if you're looking to have non-deer areas, Planet Pier. No better way, no better area, no better densification, noise, getting you in and out of the property. You really want to see this work, put your HD screening out, out here and put John, John's, uh, put John's HD screening here and then put switchgrass on the inside of it and have a double layer. That really, really works, right? But the and then over the years, maybe you don't have to plant as the switchgrass gets taller, right? Maybe you don't have to plant the screening. But those two together, the densification that you can get and that visual um, obstruction is huge. But if you're planning it to hunt around and you're planning it to to take um, you know take a forty and and uh, you got twenty of open here, twenty or thirty open, you got ten acres of timber in the back. You 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 own so much property that you you don't you're you're not utilizing right so planning this to switch would be a great start would be a great way to densify the property then going in and carving out those areas so how how do you it it's easier to it's easier to plant the entire thing then go in and carve that out of that area but you're wasting switch at that point right so I recommend doing is is going in and having those areas laid out and then going in and planting around them that's that's the best way because switchgrass is not cheap but one of the neatest things to do to really see it to really be able to carve that out and really see that if you have time and if you're not worried about wasting 10% of that planning right 20% of that planning is to plant that into a solid switchgrass bank, reclaim it, get your densification easier to plant, get all the you know the the crap out of there as far as the uh, ob obstructions and rock piles and old trees and stumps and all that stuff. Right, clean it out, get it all planted to switch. Then take that mulcher in or a bush hog and get in there and you carve this grid out of your habitat pockets to the outside, your food plots, uh, maybe some buck bedding on the internal. Then you have a grid, right? You fly over it with a drone, it's all a solid switch grass, grass area. You fly over with a drone after you, you lay that out and you follow your hunt stand app around there and you carve it out and you can steer deer like crazy, right? Very loud, cures the, gets you the densification um, make you making this maze, but what do you do in these areas that you pocket it out, right? That's where the browse has to come in to make those uh, stand out bedding areas to to do the steering the deer, right? You have to have something that feeds them in their bed. So no deer, solid switch. You want deer and you want to use this. What you've done, guys, instead of the wind whistling across that entire place, you've, you've broken that up. Great, great thermal protection. 
a good stand of switchgrass at deer that are three foot and below, and that stuff is five, six foot tall, and as dense as it is, it's a huge windbreak. But what I would do is I'd be going in, dropping a couple spruce trees in each one of these habitat pockets. So another thing, to follow up more thermal protection, so you'd have your spruce, you would have the switchgrass, and then you go in and you take John's Forbes of Forages blend, or a blend like that, and you go in and you reclaim that area. So I wouldn't go clovers or, or any of your food plot blends in there, but I would definitely be planting stuff in there that you could potentially um, make hinge cuts 10 years down the road out of it. You could potentially, you, you've got to reach that browse requirement in there, guys. Uh, plum bush, blackberry, greenbrier, and, and red osier dogwood. A lot of this stuff is sometimes stuff that you've got on the farm. If not, I highly recommend reaching out to um, Brad Harper at Harper Growing Solutions um, out of Michigan, out of Montague, Michigan there, and tell him that you've got these pockets and that you're trying to fill them with a bunch of um, bush habitat, right? Brad's going to be able to tell you how to protect that if you need to protect it or you need to plant 20-30% more so it grows. Um, you know, whether you're buying uh, cuttings or you're buying potted plants, whatever that situation is. But remember guys, to, to really get the full effect, it's not just plant switchgrass and switchgrass cures everything and you're going to bring deer in for miles and miles around. Switchgrass is, is a great tool. It all depends on what you're doing it and where you're putting it. I think is, is a, the biggest misunderstanding of switch is folks just think that switchgrass is super, super bedding. Switchgrass is not bedding unless it has food in it, right? It's no different than having uh, bedding in a timber um, area just because it's a secluded part of the farm. If it doesn't have sunlight, it doesn't have food, it's not going to have bedding, right? Or it's just because it's thick. perfect example would be uh, just because it's thick with autumn olive doesn't mean that there's going to be a bunch of deer in it because if there's no valuable browse, reachable browse, and that autumn olive has got the forest floor, that double canopy or triple canopy, and it's got it uh, locked off, uh, kudzu down south, stuff like that. Well, just because it's thick doesn't mean it's bedding, right? So because of the food value, five times, they feed five times in a 24 hour period, two or three of which are internal of these bedding areas. So if you really want it to, to get the best bang for your buck with switch, no pun intended, right? But if you want to get that best value out of it, make sure you're implementing it in the right spots at the right time, planning it, and the where to is a big, big piece of switchgrass success.